Hi everyone, thanks for joining the session. We are here today to talk about SAP running on Microsoft Azure. We have the privilege to be today with Cameron Gardner. Hello Cameron. Hello. You are the SAP on Azure guy at Microsoft. Please tell us a little bit more about your role. So I work in the Azure customer advisory team. My role is focused on enabling our SAP customers to run on our Azure public cloud. Before joining Microsoft, I was a SAP consultant for many years and I joined Microsoft about 12 years ago, initially working in the SQL Server product group and later moving to the Azure development team. And the reason why we work together is because I'm helping partner in the region in APAC, uh, adopting SAP on Azure. So we're working and making things happen uh, with our SAP expert partners and deploying solutions for our customers. So welcome to the session. Again, we have a packed agenda for the next 40-ish minutes. We're going to talk about a lot of things regarding SAP on Azure uh, news. So it's pretty much a session that requires some prior knowledge that you have on SAP on Azure. We will focusing, we'll be focusing during the session on mainly a series of updates on the hot topics that are uh, running those days and cloud has that fantastic characteristic that is changing every day and bringing innovation every day. So that's really what we are uh, about to do today to cover those, uh, those topics and give you some of the guidance. So we start with a recap on Microsoft and SAP uh, commitment. We'll talk a little bit about HANA, Enterprise Cloud, and Azure. Do we have to choose? Uh, and then we talk about the uh, VM and compute options for running SAP on Azure, especially in the region, in APAC. Then a little bit of a certification update. So what can we run in which conditions inside uh, Azure Cloud? And then a very hot topic as well, building SAP disaster recovery plans uh, with uh, Azure and keep for the end uh, the latest technology updates around running SAP on Azure on various uh, latest Microsoft platform and third party solutions. So here we go, SAP on Azure, what is what is all about? Well, this is a first an executive uh, uh, partnership that we had for more than 20 years, which means that we are working together, we are co-engineering, we are used to test our product to run uh, best uh, together, so it's not something new. Uh, it has been enriched a lot those last uh, few years uh, under uh, Satya um, arriving at, uh, at Microsoft. Just to summarize that, I think it's fair to say that uh, SAP runs on uh, Azure, and uh, basically uh, Microsoft runs on SAP. So there's a mutual commitment. We are largely using uh, uh, SAP and uh, SAP committed and are using basically Azure for running even their internal uh, application. Yeah, the, the, this is true. So this, this, uh, this migration, this movement that we see from, from customer uh, migrating their SAP estate on, uh, on, uh, on Azure, this is something that also Microsoft IT uh, has went through and has, has lived for the last couple of years. I think now there has a very significant part of our SAP estate running on Azure, is it? Uh, I, the, the overwhelming majority of Microsoft's large SAP system is completely deployed on Azure and this is a single instance ECC6 system where almost all of the revenue for Microsoft is running through the system, runs on Azure M series. Good. So what's in it for a customer? Why people are going to uh, basically run uh, SAP on Azure? So we see about a lot of uh, dev and test environment, disaster recovery, or even archiving scenario where they are basically uh, taking the data uh, on, on Azure because they don't want to run a system on premises, a very old system, legacy system. Just want to put it on Azure and basically once or twice a year when they need to turn it up, they put it on and they get the info and they only pay when they use it. And we of course see a lot of production uh, environment, a lot of production uh, systems moving to cloud as well. Now the savings, and we're going to talk about that in a couple of case study at the, at the end, but the, the, one of the output that we see, one of the outcome is really the cost uh, saving, more agility, uh, facility to uh, easiness to, uh, to, to deploy solution fast and saving, as we mentioned, on the cost and on the total cost of, uh, of ownership. So this, this partnership, we are uh, basically working on it uh, every, uh, every 
every day, let's say. Uh, we had a lot of announcements during the last uh, SAP Azure, during the last, during the la last uh, events from SAP and during the last event from Microsoft. Uh, if we look at one of the events that happened in the last few weeks, uh, Sapphire uh, now, 2018, there has been a couple of um, announcements. So we've been uh, working on the M series for quite uh, now a couple of, uh, couple of months. Uh, started uh, a Singapore data center has been pioneering it in, uh, in Asia and now we have it available in more than 12 uh, regions worldwide. So the, the compute power for M series, uh, roughly speaking, we're talking about things uh, between 100, uh, 1 and 92 gig of RAM up to 4 TB. Yes. So that's good. This is innovation, but we have even more uh, innovation that we announced at, at Sapphire Cameron. Yes, so uh, Microsoft will, has announced uh, the 12 terabyte version of M-Series, the M-Series version 2. Uh, this is in development and uh, there, there will be more details around the, the timetable for this uh, coming in the future. It's based on the, the latest Intel CPU and this, uh, this will be certified for SAP HANA systems up to 12 terabytes. So we talk about the virtual machines. If we want to, to go uh, to HANA, uh, virtual machines uh, will use M or MV2 in, in, in the future. Uh, we also have an uh, option to use hardware directly. This is what we call uh, HANA large instances. That's, that's true. So Microsoft has uh, two approaches uh, for running HANA workloads. So. Uh, we have the virtual machines, which today is up to 4 terabytes, and in the future up to 12 terabytes. We also have bare metal physical appliances, and the reason for this is that the capabilities and performance envelope for the bare metal appliance is always going to be ahead of and exceed the envelope for a virtual machine. Uh, on, on top of the performance characteristics, there are also the certification requirements. So it's much faster for us to bring the HANA large instances certified and ready uh, for all HANA workloads uh, than it is for virtual machines, which require additional certification and validation. This is what we mean by TDI. So TDI is specification from, from SAP, and we rely directly on those specifications, the, the, the hardware that we deploy, right? That's correct. And today, the maximum size uh, available is 24 terabytes, uh, which is large enough for nearly every customer out there. That's pretty pretty impressive size of RAM, yeah? Kind of hard to imagine, but yeah, good. <laughs> So this is a, a single operating system image. This is not scale out. So for scale out, it's even larger, but uh, this is for a single instance of HANA 24 terabytes. So if, if we want to do scale out for all app workloads, we can go up to how, how much? Uh, at, at least 60 terabytes. Okay. Good, fair enough. That's a, that's a huge amount of, of, of RAM, uh, huge c compute power. Uh, last uh, of, the, of the many announcements that was done at, uh, at Sapphire, SAP Cloud Platform on, um, on Azure. A couple of words on that. So the SAP Cloud Platform Foundation is now certified and available. So we're onboarding the specific services. So uh, customers who want to use SCP, SAP Cloud Platform, on Azure, uh, I'd really encourage, please, please contact uh, ourselves and uh, our email addresses will be at the back of the presentation. Good. So one of the many announcements. Uh, just to have a quick recap, uh, we talk about the HANA large instances, we talk about the virtual machine. Just a quick recap on the availability uh, that, that we have for those uh, virtual machines. Uh, so we start with the very uh, simplest uh, possible scenario. and. That's worth mentioning it because we're the only cloud platform to offer an SLA on single instance virtual machine. So if I just take one SAP server on one application server and one DB, I can have an SLA of 99.9 yep. uh, for the uh, for the platform. So for the for the running the underlying infrastructure environment, that's what we are offering. So already not too bad. And we have a, a larger number of customers out there who have not 
absolutely mission critical SAP systems who are leveraging this single VM SLA. Um, but if you want to go um, higher into the high availability, uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, additional solutions. So we have availability sets for now quite a long time, which offer you protection against failure within uh, a data center. So just to recap on the infrastructure, uh, within uh, Azure we have what we call regions. A region uh, is a set, a set of data centers, so for Singapore we have uh, three uh, data centers. And inside this uh, data center we have multiple uh, clusters for storage, compute and, and network. And an availability set will make sure that basically your machine will run on different clusters, so that if one cluster fails, then you have another machine with the same role, which is redundant within the data center. Yeah. That's the availability set, and we can go further with uh, availability zones, Cameron. So SAP is uh, documented, tested, and supported on Azure availability zones, and in fact, we are working with a, a customer who has deployed this in Singapore today. Uh, and, and we talk a little bit more about this in a later slide. Uh, but our, our documentation and uh, the blog site uh, where, where I blog has more details on how to deploy this. And this delivers a 99.99% minimum SLA. Uh, many customers achieve much more. Yep, and when we're doing basically the availability zones, what we decide is to spread the instances amongst those different data centers that we mentioned previously. That's, that's correct, though uh, we do recommend to keep the database server and the SAP application servers as close as possible for the best performance. So if a picture were a thousand words, let's look a little bit of a sample architecture that we see here. So that's really what we see from some customer adopting um, uh, SAP on Azure with availability zones right now. And you have the link on the slide, uh, aka.ms slash SAPHA, that describes those architecture. Here you see that we have um, two uh, availability zones out, out of the tree. And what we did into this architecture diagram is we having the SAP central services. So we have one instance active, another uh, passive into availability zone one uh, and two. We are creating a load balancer. So this is what we call a standard load balancer because the standard load balancer has this capacity to spread the traffic across the different data centers. And then we have uh, the DBMS layer using the same, uh, the same technology. So across two um, availability zones with the load balancer. Uh, just something that worth mentioning here, the replication of the data at the database layer is done by the database technology. So if we're using HANA, for instance, we're using HSR, SQL Server. Always on and the set of technology, yeah. So as, as you mentioned, uh, we have tested the, the capacity that, okay, by default, it's probably better if, uh, say, if the whole system runs uh, in the same availability zone. So we have the application server and the DBMS server into the same uh, zone. But of course, if we have a, a failure of one of the cluster, it is totally supported that we have uh, the application server zone one and using the DB on zone two. So the consultants in the audience are uh, the basis people. Uh, there's a report built into most SAP systems. In, in SE38, you can run SSA CAT and run ABAP meter. And the columns you want to check are DB access and DBE access. That will tell you your latency between your app server and your DB server. And uh, obviously, the less latency, the better. Excellent. So that's it for the quick overview. Uh, so we hear a lot this, this question from customer and we do a lot of events joined with SAP. Uh, they join us uh, at our event, we join them at, at our event. And very often customer would ask you and say, hey, uh, Cameron, this is really fine. Uh, SAP is talking about HEC and you're talking about Azure. What should I choose? And the good news is, well, you don't have to choose because basically uh, you can do uh, the benefits of both worlds, you can use HEC yep. running on Azure. Can you, uh, so we see in the, in the picture the, the stack of the different uh, services here, can you tell us a little bit more on how does it work exactly? So uh, SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud is an offering from SAP where they manage the hosting and the application management service, uh, all in a, a bundle at a, at a fixed price. 
uh, for you. Uh, typically SAP is partnered with uh, data center providers, maybe um, HP or NTT or IBM, uh, the data center provider, and then they, they may work with other uh, managed services providers. It, it could be TCS, uh, could be IBM. Uh, we've been working very closely with SAP to make sure that our customers have an option to run uh, SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud on the Azure platform and benefit from the, the dynamic capabilities of Azure Cloud in conjunction with SAP's HANA Enterprise Cloud offering. So the, the, uh, basically all of this uh, variety of, of options is basically here to serve customer what's, what's best for them and the best mix that, yeah. that they want to pick. Because they can run a, 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 a hack. Uh, they might also very much want to go with one of our many partners uh, that are providing SAP uh, on, on Azure. Yeah, the, the strategy from Microsoft and, and the strategy I hear custom, customers want Microsoft is, is to give choices. So uh, HANA Enterprise Cloud is definitely one of those choices. Or uh, hosting directly with uh, our, our very capable partner network. Uh, all, all of the main system integrators uh, such as TCS, Infosys, Cognizant, Accenture and, and many others are uh, partners we, we work with each and every day. Uh, you, you and I, we're deeply involved with a, a project with T-Systems today. Absolutely. So that's really for offering you the widest uh, range of, uh, of choices. If you're used to work with some guys who have uh, great services, that's totally fine. Uh, you don't have to replace the wall stack. You just say, okay, we're moving to Azure because that comes into our strategy and you can do it your pace. Yeah, I, I think the important concept with, with cloud is, is choice and flexibility and uh, dynamic and, and quick response. So another hot uh, topic, Cameron. Yes. So this is very uh, specific to uh, SAP when we're going to uh, to cloud, right? Uh, you can basically do anything SAP on Azure as long as it's dev and test. You can spin up any VM, play with it. It will work because it's just basically a VM where you play. But when it comes to production, things getting serious. Uh, you need your the VM you're executing your workload to be certified. Um, just for information of our uh, audience, uh, certification process, well, what does it uh, do and what does it mean exactly? Okay, without going into to too many details, but um, Microsoft and SAP have been working together since more than 20 years on certification, since the, the first versions of SAP were ported to Windows initially, and a few years later, SAP was ported onto SQL Server. So this process is, is nothing new for, for us at, at, at Microsoft. So we have uh, colleagues of mine who are based in, in Waldorf in Germany at SAP's headquarters. And we also have uh, a number of SAP resources who, who are based in our headquarters in, in Redmond. Uh, we, we have colleagues who uh, are focused on nothing other than, for example, HANA certification, uh, running HWCCT in various configs, standalone configs, scale out configs, uh, in, in order to uh, validate the uh, certification requirements that, that SAP put in place. So, a certification, in a sense, is kind of a guarantee of performance or test against that amount of load? Yeah, so SAP have some uh, quite strict KPIs that uh, especially for HANA, but also for NetWeaver applications as, as well. Uh, new versions of databases, new versions of operating systems, but the certification requirements for HANA are, are very strict and, and quite precise. So this is what you see on this uh, on this page here. And uh, very often, a uh, consultant that uh, I visit say, "Hey, I want to do SAP on Azure. Where should I start?" And I give them this very link because this is the source of truth for anything uh, SAP on Azure. So what it gives you is basically the view of uh, which uh, SKU, which VMs of Azure are certified for HANA, NetWeaver, which version, which product, which combo of OS and DB uh, layers. 
And this links us to the even ultimator source of truth, if we can say this word, which is the SAP Note. Yeah, and the SAP certified IaaS platform contains the original source of, of truth about what uh, SAP applications uh, are certified on, what Azure VMs and HANA large instances. And there, there are also conditions there such as which uh, minimum operating system requirements uh, for Azure M series, there's a requirement to use the right accelerator. Over and on top of this, we have some of our best practices and guidance. Uh, for example, one might be to use accelerated networking. Okay, now we are going to cover those topics actually just right now. So if we look at the at this uh, IaaS uh, platform like directory, this is the extract that is uh, uh, related to the M series. So we see here the various version of uh, M series that goes up to uh, 4 TB of, of RAM. So the M series are uh, SKU that we mentioned are available in a little bit more than uh, 12 regions as we, as we speak. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the SKU made for HANA. It is certified. Um, you mentioned about write accelerator, which is one of the prerequisites to, to, to deploy it. Can, can you just give us a quick words around what it is exactly? Uh, very, very briefly. Uh, we probably don't have too much time to, to dive into it, but uh, there is a, uh, a, a non-volatile module inside the M-series that drastically improves uh, performance for writing to the HANA transaction log or uh, for other DBMSs may be able to use the right accelerator feature as well. But it, it, it's actually a hard requirement uh, to use this on the HANA transaction log disk. Uh, one of the very hot questions that you and I probably get uh, every week, or even more frequently, is I want to do my SAP on Azure stack. So, so slight uh, difference. Yes, so Azure Stack, uh, we do see the demand from, from customers and, and please contact us uh, if you're interested in this topic. So Azure Stack uh, today is 12 nodes, in the future increasing to 16. Uh, as mentioned, there are very strict requirements for HANA, so in, in the medium term, I don't think we could talk about Azure Stack running SAP HANA, certainly not in production, uh, but for SAP NetWeaver, uh, it, it's a topic that we're, we're discussing. We would love to hear more from you about your uh, requirements in this area. Again, so keep till the last minute. We have our email slide to, to reach us on those, on those scenario that you wanna, that you wanna work on. And another very important uh, uh, topic that Again, uh, I see a lot of partners here in, uh, in Asia uh, are saying, hey, we run uh, Business One. We uh, want to move away from maybe the small data center that we have to get benefit on maybe an SLA on single instance, for instance. Yeah. That's already a, a huge improvement. So we have Business One, which is certified right now to run on SQL Server. Yeah, so a, a lot of the world's Business One systems run on SQL Server today. So uh, that's fully certified. You can you can choose any any suitable VM, and that's certified and supported today. For HANA, we have the D fourteen V two that is certified for up to forty users, and we are in the process of uh, certifying the smaller M series. Uh, to run Business One on HANA. Uh, we expect that to come in the next, uh, ne next few months. Okay, very good update then for our partners and customer in, uh, in APAC. Next, uh, next topic about the availability of the SKUs, of the different SKU in, in Asia. So that's uh, probably for our, our people seeing the slides in full screen now, but just to recap on the different data centers that we have in Southeast Asia. So Southeast Asia means Singapore, and we have the pair uh, data center in uh, Hong Kong, then Australia, India, and uh, North, uh, Northeast uh, Asia. So we have the uh, uh, well, the GS uh, first. Let's let's start with the GS because we still see this VM in in some uh, listings. 
So generally I'd recommend customers deploy on the more modern uh, EV3 series. The, the GVM is now relatively old and uh, we see customers transitioning away from uh, GS5 and on to EV3. A um, couple of things about uh, GS5, for, for example, it, it doesn't support accelerated networking. So I, I would tend to recommend customers move to the EV3. Yeah, so especially EV3 has a broader, much more broader coverage in the regional uh, uh, presence, so which is certified for now. Uh, SAP uh, NEDB, SAP HANA is uh, planned on EV3 as we just uh, as we just covered a little bit of words around that. We have the M series and the fractional M series that are uh, in uh, Singapore, Australia, India, and a couple of Northeast Asia um, data center, so Japan, uh, where we can uh, deploy it and uh, HANA large instances which are uh, present mainly in uh, Japan and Australia, if I'm not mistaken. That, that is correct and, and lots of customers live and, and, and running on those today. So this is changing uh, every day, so we would probably recommend you to refer to the link uh, below uh, which details the capacity per uh, region on a different uh, uh, SKU for the different workloads that you want to deploy. So an, an additional topic for the customers in particularly in New Zealand and Australia who are not exclusively but government customers, there are two additional data centres uh, located in Canberra and uh, these are designed for uh, customers, uh, maybe federal government from Australia and New Zealand who have a higher security requirement, uh, protected level and above. So these data centers have been built up and uh, are ready to go uh, for government customers. Excellent. Another of the very hot uh, topics that, that we get questioned a lot around uh, using uh, Azure for uh, SAP Backup first and for SAP uh, Disaster Recovery Plan. I think this is one of the very big differentiators that we have is that we have a set of technologies that are out in the box already. Yeah. When you choose Azure, you have access to all those services already. So just want to be do a little bit of uh, rational before on how you use those different services. Because people would say, hey, uh, who needs a disaster recovery plan? I just need to replicate VMs, right? Which is a little bit of a shortcut. Okay, so in, in SAP application servers and central services are, are the perfect candidate for Azure Site Recovery. And Azure Site Recovery is built on two pillars. One, one is a replication technology and the other is a orchestration execution engine. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Think of uh, Azure Site Recovery replication as basically log shipping for virtual machines. Most of the audience will know what log shipping is for database. So Azure Site Recovery's replication is uh, essentially log shipping for virtual machines. Now, SAP application servers are really good candidates because there isn't a lot of file system activity under normal circumstances. So they, they actually replicate very easily. Uh, SAP database servers, on the other hand, uh, there is a lot of changes down at the file system level and also most DBMSs keep a, a large context in, in memory and uh, trying to quiesce or freeze the file system and commit that memory context to, to disk is generally not recommended. So if I summarise, uh, it would be use Azure Site Recovery for your application server and central services and then use your native DBMS replication tool uh, to replicate the database. The, this also allows you to leverage features like point-in-time recovery, being able to roll logs forward uh, from existing backups. It's, it's generally recommended. Excellent. Um, so you will find uh, uh, the link here, uh, SAPDR, that's a link to your blog, uh, Cameron, on the white papers that you wrote on the, on the subject. So a lot of very good uh, readings there. Just want to cover a little bit of topic as well here. We uh, hear a lot about using ASR for 
migration uh, of your, your yeah. environment. Is this a scenario? And what would be the limit to that? Absolutely. So we, we have customers and uh, we actually have a good case study uh, on the Azure Site Recovery uh, website uh, about an SAP customer who used Azure Site Recovery to replicate their SAP environment into Azure and then they cut over and, and migrated to Azure. So in, in general we, we would say that if, if a customer is running on a modern operating system with a modern database and with up-to-date uh, SAP kernel then this is very suitable technology. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of customers out there, their SAP landscape might be running on an old, unsupported operating system. Their database might be out of maintenance. So we, we would really encourage customers not to carry that legacy over. And uh, also there are a lot of customers who are running on IBM AIX uh, and HP Unix, and, and these, these platforms have um, uh, no, no future in reality and, and there's no public cloud uh, facility for, for these uh, proprietary architectures. So SAP provides a system copy procedure uh, which has uh, two parts, a, a heterogeneous part and a homogeneous part. So heterogeneous would be if you're moving from say AIX and DB2 and you want to move to Windows SQL or you want to move to HANA. Uh, SAP has introduced new and improved tools uh, such as the latest versions of DMO allow you to do the required upgrade and conversion to HANA uh, all at the same time. And, and we have customers who are actually doing this uh, Right as, as, we as we speak. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so again here a variety of, uh, of, of options. Probably, as you mentioned, all the operating system, uh, we probably want to refresh that when you go into the cloud. Definitely. For things quite recent, this is a viable option, at least for the application uh, layers. Yeah, and, and in terms of capacity sizing, you know, customers moving 10, 15 terabytes in a weekend, this is generally no, no problem. Uh, if if, if you have timing issues, yeah, please contact us. We see lots of customer projects doing this. Excellent. Uh, in terms of um, ASR, of, uh, so Azure Site Recovery, uh, we have, uh, of course, a deep integration with the operating system because, as you mentioned, it's, it's log chipping for the, for the virtual machine. So we have a tight uh, 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 link with the underlying layers of the, of the VM, of the operating system. So we uh, announced uh, support for SUSE 12. So uh, SUSE 12 is now supported for the Azure to Azure scenario, which is uh, say replicating from Singapore Azure to Hong Kong Azure. Uh, we, uh, Azure Site Recovery of course also works on physical servers and on VMware and on Hyper-V. Uh, all the scenarios are covered. So uh, SUSE 12 uh, is covered. Please check this, the uh, support matrix. Uh, there are some kernel dependencies there. Uh, Red Hat 7.5 is supported. And Oracle Linux, uh, which is obviously a, a supported operating system for SAP uh, on Azure, the, this will be released end of the year. Uh, features like managed disks are supported, accelerated networking, uh, we're working on better support of this. Today you can replicate a VM that has accelerated networking, but uh, accelerated networking might, may be undone during the, the failover. So uh, there are a couple of additional requests that uh, people have contacted me about, and that is what I, I, I call transcontinental Azure Site Recovery. So this is uh, a, a case where, say, you might be a customer in Australia and you want your disaster recovery to be in United States. Okay. Because just to precise, right now, uh, when you are running in an Asia data center, you can use ASR to replicate to another Asia data center but by default you cannot go outside of the region. Yeah, so the proximity is generally quite, quite 
close. So uh, again, if you uh, click on the link in the, in the slide, it will tell you which uh, data centers. But we, there is a private preview. So for customers wanting to do this, uh, please, please contact either of us. Uh, and we can assist with this. Uh, and the, the other uh, functionality that customers have asked me about is intra-region Azure Site Recovery. And this is, we spoke earlier about availability zones. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Singapore, if I have my production in availability zone two, and I want my DR to be in availability zone three. Uh -huh. So uh, remember Azure Site Recovery uh, takes care of the replication of the VM. So if you apply Linux patches, SAP kernel patches that will be picked up by Azure Site Recovery and replicated automatically. And Azure Site Recovery also uh, orchestrates and sequences the startup uh, of your uh, disaster recovery system if you have some kind of DR event. Yeah, that, that's a request we see quite often from customers. They say, hey, I want a DR, but I don't want it to go to Hong Kong. I want to still do it in Singapore. So that's the yep. answer. Very good. So yeah, as the link, the support matrix to uh, check all the prerequisites every time you're building your disaster recovery plan. Some more goodies coming up with uh, additional uh, platform updates. So we're talking about here a uh, first Microsoft platform. So support yep. for SQL Server 2017. Yes, released and generally available. Please follow the blog site. Uh, and in there you will see the SAP OSS notes that talk about the uh, required support pack releases uh, and the required SWPM releases. Uh, for, for those SAP basis people and SQL Server customers, the uh, support pack releases are, are pretty much the same as SQL 2016. Very good. And as we speak, Windows Server 2019 is around the corner. We are already working. Yes, so uh, SAP in Germany are already testing Windows Server 2019. So this is a, a work in progress. And uh, obviously, uh, SAP will not uh, uh, support this until Microsoft releases it. No, this that is, sounds fair. This is one of the rules. But uh, if there are customers out there who have a project go live, say towards the very end of 2019, please contact uh, me. So we run pilot projects for, for customers uh, who, who have uh, go live dates very near to our product release dates and, and they want to go live on the latest uh, version of the operating system or database. Excellent. A uh, couple of notes around uh, the guidance that you publish around Oracle ASM running on Azure. So we realized that there are a lot of SAP customers out there who run Oracle and they have a lot of investment into Oracle. They, they have uh, very skilled DBAs. Uh, they have a lot of technologies around their, their Oracle platform. So they want to stay on Oracle database, uh, which is, is, is a great idea and makes business sense. So we want customers running Oracle to have an absolutely first class experience running on Azure. And uh, one of the very good features that's been built into Oracle for a while is automatic storage management. So. Uh, if you go to my blog site, you'll see some very uh, helpful videos that will show you how to set up Oracle 12.2 uh, running on uh, Azure using automatic storage management. And uh, th this is really a combined effort of Microsoft and SAP and Oracle to get this certified and, and supported. And, and that process should be completed very soon. We, we already have worked with our, our partners, uh, SAP and Oracle, and we do have some customers who have a customer-specific permission to run Oracle ASM in production today. And uh, our, our, our partners, Oracle, have been very supportive and, and helpful. Excellent. So, to recap, what did we learn during this session? I think there was quite a lot of topics that we covered. 
Uh, Microsoft runs on SAP, SAP runs on Azure. I yes. think we're committed to provide customers the very best cloud platform to be run. Be best cloud platform and widest choice. Absolutely. Uh, we have tons of SAP skills people at Microsoft, so helping uh, those basically customer going through this uh, through this journey to make it happen as smooth as uh, as possible. Azure offers you the broadest set of compute options. So we mentioned VMs for any size. We mentioned HANA large instances if we need huge uh, amount of uh, of RAM. Security and compliance, something that we didn't mention specifically during this session, but we have, as we speak, more than 78 offerings in terms of security and compliance. So that's something that customer going through Azure can uh, rely on, uh, definitely. So ISO, SOC, and all the, uh, all the norms and uh, insurance that we are doing things the best in the industry. Uh, we are the hybrid cloud company with many options. We discuss about Azure, Azure Stack. Yep. It's pretty much you choose the options that are best suitable for uh, for you. I think one of the very uh, major points that you are working on every day is proven experience to run the largest SAP and migrate the largest SAP uh, estates and landscapes to uh, Azure. Yes. And uh, of course, very fundamental, uh, we are working with all the partners in the region and in the world to make this happen. So if you're working with a set of partners that you are happy with them, they are probably already doing SAP on Azure. So just ask them, they'll be happy to serve you into that, uh, that purpose. One of the questions that you probably get as much as I get as well is, I'm totally fine, Google SAP on Azure, uh, but who did it before? <laughs> so the very uh, quick answer to that is customers.microsoft.com. You can search for SAP uh, on Azure. There's many cases, including in, uh, in Asia, that we've been working on. Many new ones are going to come in the next few weeks because we are just <laughs> migrating uh, them. But one of the very interesting cases is Malaysia Airlines, right? Yes, so I was involved in this, this project pretty much from the beginning. This project is, is more than just a SAP uh, migration project. This was, in fact, an entire data center migration. So this was a 10,000 square foot production data center, which shrank down to 500 square feet, and a 6,000 square foot DR site that was eliminated, now zero square feet. SAP was one out of 122 applications uh, from lost and found, valet parking, cargo, uh, crew rostering and scheduling, engineering. All of these applications were moved uh, from uh, various platforms. SAP was running on AIX and DB2. And this was moved to Windows 2016 and SQL Server 2016. Those of you who follow my blog might have seen that I, I recently uh, posted uh, information that if a customer moves to Windows 2016 and SQL 2016, that means their technology platform is in support until 31st of December 2025, which is when SAP planned to uh, finish supporting third-party databases. So this customer here is in, their, their platform is in technical support until its projected end of life. So they need no more technical upgrades. We will do the back-end infrastructure, storage, networking, compute uh, servers. We will manage this trans, uh, transparently. Very good. So all the rest inside customers.microsoft.com. There's many, many other uh, Rio Tinto, just to name uh, one additional and, more. And nearly every weekend we have a, a major go live of a customer somewhere around Asia or a, a, a sp every weekend around the world. But around Asia, just about every weekend, there is a major customer moving on to Asia. Oh, yes, this weekend. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, guys, thank you very much for tuning in and uh, listening to us talking about this wonderful topic and the innovation going on. Uh, please uh, reach out to us. We put our email address so that you're able to basically uh, reach out to us. Don't be shy because basically SAP is a complicated uh, subject, changing all the time. I agree. And so there are topics such as uh, certification of things like uh, 
uh, data tiering, dynamic tiering, uh, scale out certification topics, uh, these get way too complex for a session like this. So uh, just email uh, if you've got a question. Cameron, thank you very much for your time. Not a problem. Pleasure to be here. And thank you very much for tuning in. Cheers.